it's it's well after lunchtime, and uh, I've finally got around to being able to get to do something on Bill's bike. So today we're going to start looking at the carburetors. Welcome to Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Right, I've got the rubber components out of the way so that they don't get damaged. Uh, as I mentioned in uh, the walk around video, or the first video, part one, these slides are all stuck. Uh, so these are these are Makuni BS. I think they're thirty twos on the might be thirty fours on the um, on the GS thousand. They're a very common carburetor for their day. Uh, they, were, they first appeared in a four cylinder bike on the XS eleven hundred. The XS eleven hundred was a, a first for a lot of uh, a lot of things. Actually, it was a, a bit of a milestone bike. So it was the first bike to have, uh, first four cylinder, four stroke to have uh, C constant velocity carburetors. And these things, at the time, back in the day, they were considered to be quite the performance carb. Um, <laughs> not so much these days, I guess, but they are what they are. They're, they're, they're a good carburetor when they're set up and they're working well. Uh, they're designed to run at, at varying altitudes and under varying conditions, so they're quite a forgiving carburetor. However, the one thing that we want to make sure is that uh, the, worst th the worst thing that can be happening with these things is these diaphragms are no good. So whether they're hold or whether they're as hard as a, um, hard as a brick, then um, they're not going to be any good to us and we'll have to replace them and that's quite a costly exercise. However, what we shall do uh, to start our venture is just give them a, 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 a scrub on the outside, so I'll clean them all up, then we'll open them up and we'll see whether or not uh, we've got you know, diaphragms that are, that are salvageable and have a look down in the float bowls. All right, let's get on with it. Uh, it's got a bit of brake cleaner. Give them, a, give them all a bit of a once-over. Worth mentioning, uh, try to avoid spraying anything down these uh, these holes here if it can be avoided. A little bit won't hurt, but try to avoid it if you can. scum off the outside not not all of it but a bit of it and these these things are still stuck in there so it's going to give them a bit of a bath in carb cleaner see if we can't start to get them to move just going to very really gently try and pry them there we go pried free That one's a bit tighter, that one's freed, that one's... Alright. Oh, they're stuck down in the needles. fourth one is jam solid all right so they're all moving uh, signs are good 
So what I'm going to do now, oh my god, these screws have been butchered. This is what happens when you don't have JIS screwdrivers, seriously. I'm going to attempt to get these caps off um, and see how we get on with the diaphragms on the top. So I'll pop this in the vise and we'll try and get, get those caps off. But as you can see, we now at least have... We now at least have the slides moving. This place is such a pigsty, it drives me crazy. All right, let's see how we go. Just trying. That's carburetor number one. Just try and gently get under the tab for that diaphragm. Wow, they're a very, uh, very blunt needle jet on these things. And uh, we'll clean that up okay. The good news is, and the thing that I was concerned about, is that that diaphragm is actually reusable. It is in serviceable condition, so that's, uh, that's a good thing. Not same with all the others. Even though someone had rounded that screw out completely with a Phillips driver, there was still enough um, enough uh, meat in there for the JIS to do its job. We're money, we're gravy, good stuff. So far, so good. The is only just wide enough to get these things down in there. These are an impactor driver so they rotate 12 degrees with each blow got him this one's really butchered and it's been cut for a flat blade driver unless of course you've got the right tools so the springs there to help springs there to aid the diaphragm in closing it's also there to help control any any fluttering. Looks like we're in luck with this this bad boy too. Yep, yep, yep. All good, no holes. And still malleable, so bonus. No holes in him either. Freaking awesome. Alright, so now I'm just, uh, what I think I'll do is just pull these, uh, these idle jets, whatever you want to call them, idle, idle jets, air fuel mixture, sc mixture screws.
and the spring as well. I'm surprised that there's no o-ring or backing washer in there. I'll have to have a bit better look. Ah, there is, I think. Let's have to have a better look. Yep. <laughs> I'm a very big believer in the Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. And if uh, you're not in the right mood, you need to walk away. Right, so there was a tiny little o-ring, uh, which is typical, little o-ring and little washer in the under the pilot valves, which I managed to get out. So now we'll have a look in the bowls. Yeah, pretty scummy. Like posts are all in one piece. Now these have a rubber plug in the above the pilot jet. And they're, this, they're a bit knocked about, but we'll reuse them, I reckon. Wow, that jet's been butchered. Mm. So we get the main out. Now. When your carburetors are this filthy, what you also want to try and do, that's just a washer under the main jet. What you also want to try and do is remove the emulsion tube because it's, uh, it's going to be filthy. Wow. Look at the state of that. That is absolutely feral. All right. Let's see if we can't get that pilot jet out of there. Or slow jet or whatever you want to refer to it as. Oh, I got it. Let's try and tap it on the bench and not destroy the floats in the process. There it is. Blocked completely. Goodness me, what is that? It's a rock. No, it's just just rusty shit. That's been hit too. It's uh, been damaged, that one. Hopefully the valve will come out of that. There's not even a screwdriver slot in that one anymore. I just want to check before we go any further, see if I can see a number on these emulsion tubes, just in case 
Suzuki decided to put different ones in different carburetors because uh, some manufacturers do that. The inside carburetors are, sometimes have a different size tube and all of this is the holes are a different size and they do that because the inside carburetors run hotter than the outside carburetors and I can't see one so we'll just assume they're all the same it uh, it really doesn't make a lot of difference if uh, if they are different good god There's no screw left on that one either. pretty bad. All right, I might just leave that one in there until I get all this other stuff out of the way and I might have to put a bit of heat on it see if I can't get the shift. It's quite common that these posts get broken off um, so the best way to do to get these pins out is with an automatic pin punch uh, Santa Pop. I'm around like a headless chook at the moment because because I rearranged all my toolbox because uh, my new job I have bloody no idea where, everything, where anything is most of the time seeing if there's any fluid in them look at the state of this have a look at it goodness gracious me pretty scummy Oh, it looks like it's got a screw off to the side that's holding it like a keeper plate.
here, right. Then what holds the needle and seat in? It's just got to be sitting in there, right? Let's try and get that pilot jet out and not burn the house down doing it. Hear that crunching? That's bad. Whoo doggy. It's just a butchered piece of junk down in there. Be drilling that one out, I reckon. Safety third. See if I can get a screw extractor in there. And I know unscrewing that's just spinning in there, I think. Yeah, it's just spinning in there. So if you third. Should I try one more time? That ain't gonna work, I don't reckon. Nah. There's the whole definition of insanity thing again. Just keep going a little bit bigger each time till I get it out to the thread. Uh, I was hoping and I was hoping and praying I'd have an M5 tap, but I don't. Uh, but I'll just keep going with this. Well, tapping drill for an M5. M5's got a 0 0.8, 0 0.08, sorry, 0 0.8 of a millimetre pitch. So it's a 4.2 millimetre 
drill, and this is a four millimeter drill. So, it's about as good as it gets. Okay. All right. Well, I'm doomed. Um, I'll pop the rest of these floats out, but. I'm going to have to uh, wait, so I'll get new jets, uh, I'll get a rebuild kit, um, get a, a tap and try and get that last bit of brass out of that thread, and uh, we should be gravy, and um, I'll get it all cleaned up and there'll be a part two for all the carburetors, because we'll have to put them back together, set all the float heights, bench, bench sink, sink them, and uh, get them ready to go back on the bike. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And I'll catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now. Right, and just for the record, I didn't do it. It was already done. There is a broken post. In fact, someone's, someone's tried to glue it back together with some sort of putty. The saga continues.